Now on the APEC VIP hotline, cutting edge training for the serious athlete, apecgo.com. Joining us right now, the head football coach of the Henderson Lions, Dickie Meeks. How you doing, coach? I'm doing good, Brian. Coach, uh, congratulations, 64-35 to 35 over Salina this past weekend, and your ground game just chewed it up. Tell me about the ball game. Well, you know, the, the game was a whole lot closer than the, than the final score ended, but, uh, Ryan, we got a couple uh, touchdowns there late on some mistakes they made, but, um, you know, uh, we were, were able to move the ball on the ground, and I think that was the, 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 biggest, the biggest difference uh, in the game. Have you ever had a football team that uh, needed to pass less than this team does? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think about it this morning. You know, I think we threw four passes last week, and uh, yeah, I, think, I know that's the least amount of any team I've ever coached is thrown. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but you just, you know, if, if you if you keep blocking pretty well and guys keep running, there's not a whole lot of need to do that. No, absolutely not. Uh, talk about the performance of Diamante Wright, 293 yards and three touchdowns. You know, outstanding, but first of all, you got to go to start that whole deal is with the offensive line. Yep. And, and our offensive line is just playing better and better each week. Um, our outside receivers are doing a good job of blocking. And, you know, and Diamante's breaking some tackles. And when you have those kind of things, you know, working for you, you end up, usually end up um, having a pretty good game rushing wise. And then Monster Brown had another big night, 139 yards and five touchdowns. Yeah, and, you know, this is the same kind of deal with him. Now, he's a little bit, a little bit different of a runner. He's not going to. Uh, uh, power run you a whole lot, but he's going to break some tackles. And, and you know, when he gets in the open field, he's pretty hard to fool with. So now you guys get the rematch. You play Gilmer this weekend. Uh, what's that like having to play a team from your district the second time? Well, you know, the 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 the, the great thing about it is it means you got to the regional finals. Um, and it, I, I don't, you know, I've never had to do it before. So I really, I mean, you know, never played one from my own district. Uh, and so I've never never had to do that. But, you know, Jeff and I have talked all the way up through the playoffs hoping that this game would, would you know, would evolve because it would mean both of us were there. So, you know, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be wonderful for East Texas. I think there's going to be a whole lot of people there. Oh, man, I can't imagine there'll be an empty space at Lobo Stadium Friday night. I was talking to Coach Collins. He said he was going to even open up the hill, so <laughs> he's expecting a, he's expecting a big deal too. Now, the last time you guys played, you lost twenty eight to twenty six. Tell me what you remember about that ball game. I don't I remember a whole lot about it. You know, we 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 hurt ourselves a lot in that game. We had uh, three procedure penalties that that cost us two touchdowns and a two point conversion, and we did them. I mean, there wasn't any question about that. Uh, you know, and we just just one guy made a mistake and didn't line up on the line of scrimmage uh, that I think would have you know would have made the game would have made the game much better. We had a big turnover early in the first quarter, and you know you just can't do those things against a, a team like Gilmer and win. Now, do you feel like it gives you an edge the fact that uh, you guys are coming in having lost to them the first time that you got a little bit more motivational factor than than maybe Gilmer does? Yeah. I, I, I really don't think so because I think Gilmer is going to prepare the same way no matter what. I mean, they've been in these kind of games, you know, for for ten, twelve years now, and I think that they're, you know, they're not they're they're not going to look at it as we've already beaten them so so. They look at it as we need to beat them again to go on where we want to go. So, how do you prepare for playing a team like this a second time when you know them so well? Well, I don't think you prepare much differently. I think that you see what the what different things are doing well from what they did the first time, and you have to adjust those things. But you know, it's not a, a, a like having to make a complete game plan from somebody out of your region that you know nothing about. You know what they have, and you know they have a ton of speed. They have a good run game. They have a good passing game. I mean, they're a balanced team, and so I don't think it's. It's it, it you know it, it's what you're you just got to know what you're preparing for you know what it is there, and then talk a little bit about how different your teams are from when you met on October the thirteenth to where you are now. Well, I think we're we're we are a lot different than the way we started the game that game. We ended up that was the first game that we moved uh, Patrick Brown uh, to the quarterback position. We had played him there you know just a little bit in some wildcat, and I think we're improved. From, from that time by, by doing that. You know, I think Gilmer has improved in their overall run game. They were, you know, they, they have three guys that can take it to the house anytime they get it. So, 
you know, so I think both teams have improved. I think both teams' offensive lines are better than they were at that time. So, you know, it's just just one of those one of those games. It's going to be a great ball game. And and then talk about uh, the fact that here you are playing Gilmer in the quarterfinals. Kilgore's still alive in Division One. Uh, it just the, your district is just ridiculous. It, it is, and you know, and we've said that ever since it was it was aligned last year. You know, I mean, you lose a great team like Carthage out of it, and you bring a great team like Kilgore and and, and even Bullard. I, you know, I, I feel for those guys a little because I think that any other district in this area, they would have been first or second in the playoffs. So, you know, the district itself is strong. You had a defending state champion in the district, and and it just it just shows, you know, it really shows the strength of the total district. It really does. Well, you've had teams now that have gone this far before, so how do you compare this team with those? I mean, do you get a feeling that this team it compares with one of your state championship teams? Well, you know, it, it, it compares some on paper because – our 89 team had lost four games when we went in, but we had lost four games by about a total of eight points. We had lost three of these games by seven points. Hmm. So, you know, it kind of compares there. We were a predominantly running team at that time, and, you know, right now we're, we're running the ball, you know, a little better. Uh, but <clears throat> personnel is personnel, and, you know, it's kind of hard to, to, to compare that. So Sure. But you, you have a feeling that, about this team? Is there, What is it that makes this team special? Well, I really think um, the senior class has been through a whole lot. Uh, they lost one of their 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 best athletes and players and friends in the tenth grade in a in a vehicle accident. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got some kids that's kind of pulled together um, with some grandfathers and fathers passing away this year, and I think they're just playing together really well. I don't. You know, there's some talented kids out there, but I just think they're playing together really good. What do you think's key to the victory on Friday night? We can't turn the ball over. I'm going to give you the coach talk and then give you what I think is one of the other keys. Okay. We can't turn the ball over, and we can't get penalties. And then we have to continue to be able to run the ball. That's good enough. Coach, hey, thanks very much for coming on with us. Best of luck to you on Friday night. Congratulations for making it into the regional finals. Thank you. Good thanks, talk. Brian. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Dickie Meeks Bye-bye. from the Henderson Lions on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM.